I don't know what everyone's clapping for. Your laptop. But... We're starting the panel. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Jordan. Uh, I work as a director in the 2D department at uh, Rooster Teeth. I do writing for shows like Camp Camp. Um, and that's all I do. <laughs> Uh, I'm Maggie, and I am the sole producer for 2D. Woo! Sole producer. Woo! I'm Isa, and I have been lead animator for a lot of 2D projects so far. <laughs> uh, I'm Cole, and I'm the only designated editor for 2D. <laughs> I'm Jordan Battle. Um, I'm just an animator. <laughs> just happy to be here. He's just happy to be here. <laughs> uh, we have one more introduction Jordan wanted to make. This is our friend, the platypus. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear it in here. <laughs> Coming soon to a Rooster Teeth store near you. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I think uh, the way we just wanted to start this out was just kind of to give y'all a brief overview of everything that we do, as well as point out the various people from our various departments that are here today with us. Um. We're going to start with a retrospective video that Cole Aww. put together using his editing skills. Yeah, I do good. <laughs> As you see, we've come a long way from that very crappy RTAA. <laughs> it's really hard to look at that sometimes. <laughs> it's just so bad. Um, yeah, so there was, there was a, a peek at some of the other projects we've done, um, like the Battle Sloths trailer for our games department. I think the only thing that wasn't on there was the uh, uh, World of Remnant Yeah, the World of uh, yeah, for right. Ruby. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay, because that's the only thing I didn't direct. So. Yeah. <laughs> it Jordan didn't matter. Panel. We didn't need to see that. <laughs> that was the only thing uh, Carrie directed. Um, but yeah, it's been quite a journey so far. Yeah, uh, It's kind of weird because basically the way that 2D evolved was um, Jordan was working off-site uh, making these fan animated stories to the podcast. Um, and then Rooster Teeth invited him to come in and work full-time on that. 
Um, and that was around the same time that uh, we were starting to build the animation department. And so after Ruby 2 wrapped, I was available to produce something new. And so Jordan and I first collaborated on X-Ray and Vav Season 1, which is where we met uh, Issa and Jordan, Jordan Battle, Battle. <laughs> um, as, along with our other animator, John Floyd. Um, <laughs> and uh, Cole was our editor then, too. <laughs> Um, but from there, we were able to really grow a department when we first started working on Camp Camp Season 1. Um, a lot of what happened with X-Ray and Vav was us being like, ah, we figured out how to do this for 3D, let's see if we can do 2D. And then with Camp Camp, we kind of really picked up our stride, and so it's been really exciting to see how we've been able to play with different things, like with Sex Swing and everything like that, which was a complete departure. Um, and we just have even more stuff that we're excited to get to tell you about as soon as we can. <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, one thing we want to talk about is um, just our general pipeline for 2D. Um, first off, stand up or raise your hand if you work on our 2D stuff and you are here. Yay! Yay! Stand. <laughs> um, so how do you want to do this? You want to go over? I'm reading your thing. Okay, so, okay. I'm on the first thing here. Uh, so it all starts with writing. Um, so if we're just talking about Camp Camp specifically, it's you get uh, the four writers for Camp Camp are me, Miles, Gray, and Carrie, and we'll uh, go in a room together and start coming up with ideas, and then... Um, uh, if people want to team up, they'll like take that idea and um, write it together, or we'll just branch out, and call dibs on one, and go ahead and write it. Um, and then it goes through like final polish pass and stuff through me and Miles. Um, and then at, when we have the script generated and everything's finalized, and Maggie says it's okay to make this into an episode, <laughs> uh, we do storyboards. Um, so our storyboard artist is Al. Al. We're at here. There he is. Yeah. Al. So there's, there's a lot of ways you could do storyboards. Uh, the way Al and I do it is we, again, it involves a lot of going in a room with people. Uh, we, we're locked in a room for uh, up to four hours at a time is usually how long sometimes it takes. Six. Sometimes, sometimes six. Sometimes, sometimes six. Um, and we go over the script and we kind of break it down shot by shot. I'll have a general idea of each kind of shot um, listed out in the margins of the script. and. I'll just kind of describe who's in the shot and stuff to Al, and he'll do these thumbnails and take those and uh, go generate uh, actual full-fledged storyboards that uh, then, uh, well, not immediately go into uh, animatic, but in parallel goes into uh, concept art. Um, and voice recorded. Well, this is yeah. concept art says here. Yeah. I'm reading your. It's I'm reading your lines. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know what the list. This is what it's like for to work with me and Maggie. Yeah. It's all. It's just. All I don't know. We sit in a row and it's. I don't just know what that nightmare. paper says, but while y'all are doing um, storyboards, Chris Kokinos and the audio team are recording. Yeah. Right. Um, all so, the dialogue. Like, all the dialogue. Yeah. Chris and Tyler. So yeah. So. Shout out to Lori Yates who can't be here. Lori Yates, yes. She's in Alaska. She's in Alaska. She's in Alaska. <laughs> um, so yeah, after after boards. Uh, basically, after writing, everything kind of branches off into parallels where it's we can board at the same time, we can start recording, and then we start doing concept art with our artists like Jordan Whitman, <laughs> at, who should stand up and get a round of applause, Woo! and Lauren. Is Lauren here? <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, Jordan number three. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, have to, Jordan. I have to deal with three Jordans on my team. Just <laughs> appreciate that, please. Um, you can handle backgrounds. Okay. Easy. You do that stuff. Yeah, so uh, what's kind of unique about our pipeline is that uh, we only have Lauren and Jordan Whitman in house as far as our artists, but we have background artists that work remotely. And so we give them notes uh, for everything they need, reference from previous seasons, things like that, and they bring us back PSDs that we can put into the show. And it's cool. I don't know. <laughs> Yep, that's how that works. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, while that's going on, um, 
we we take those concepts and if they're you know if they're props they get modeled and uh, if they're new characters we uh, have to rig them and stuff and this is where Issa comes in because Issa knows how to rig characters really Issa well. And Issa um, and battle. And battle. The whole team, I was gonna let Issa yeah, we all take do it. it. Yeah, we all do it. Everyone, um, our small but mighty team uh, is. <laughs> I'm going to repeat that. Our team is small but mighty, and that means everyone in our team has to wear multiple hats. So a good majority of our team knows how to animate, but they also know how to rig a character properly in the software that we have. Yeah. So it's a very intensive. <laughs> how many people do we have that are 2D only? That are animation only? No, just like in our 2D program. I guess uh, that's the same. I mean, how many people make Camp Camp? <laughs> oh. At least, yeah, 20. Uh, around 20. Yeah. 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 Small but mighty. It's about 14 people actually in house though. Yeah, mm. that's right. Uh, we also so when we when we talk about audio um, near the end of the pipeline. So of course everything's animated um, <laughs> in in after the model and rigging. Um, in fact, we can go over the kind of the process. Yeah. We have a little process video we could show. <laughs> um, kind of the progression from just animatic to full fledged uh, animation. Um, so you're going to hear, th this is part from uh, Cult Camp, episode one of season two. It's part of the song, so you're going to hear the song a bunch of times. Um, you're also going to notice uh, the audio changes. So it starts with temp music that Miles did. It goes into uh, <laughs> further temp music where it's not the final instrumentation, it's just piano. And then the last thing, the last uh, pass through is completely final. So uh, we'll play this. Your shoes are shine, your breath dolce, but still I find I have to say I so think anime. I might be better than you. Please go away. <laughs> you seem impressed with what you've shown, but I don't find it that compelling. You've sung my praise, but not your own, and well, I think that's pretty telling. But while we're on the subject of how I'm superb and leagues above you, ought to know I'm number one. Oh, so Wait, um, a yeah. fun right. fun fact is that our reference that we used for this was from Aggressive Retsuko by Sanrio. <laughs> so, yeah, we were watching a bunch of them, and we saw that was a good camera move. This is the keys for this particular one that I took from the end You seem impressed with what you've shown, but I don't find it that compelling. You sung my praise, but not your own. Really laying down the foundation of the basic idea of what I want to do. And after some notes and refining, you go into in between, which is just the in between animation. So you can see you, you can see how <laughs> oh my God. and turning those two those flat two D characters in three D space is no easy task. So. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a funny story. I remember we were watching uh, this segment in review, and Jordan Battle watches that and goes, "Fuck that!" <laughs> <laughs> Every time he watches. <laughs> Uh, but it, it, really, it really shows, like, you know, how um, the boards kind of lay the foundation of just the basic camera, uh, what the character's doing, and then it kind of just gets more fleshed out until the final thing, it just feels more, um, you know, put together. And um, the, the big jump is always there from um, the compositing visually, uh, the mix, um, the full audio track, um, and all that stuff. And the, the song... Um, the guy who does all of our music is a guy named uh, Benjamin Zecker, uh, who does a great job. He's done all the music for Camp Camp um, uh, throughout the show. Um, and uh, it's 
I'm give him a shout out because he does a really good job. Yeah. Yeah, ben. So there's also, yep, editorial. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just Cole. So, yeah. Just Cole. Just me. <laughs> Cole, Cole, you're. T- we get help from others too. Yeah. No, they don't help at all. When Cole, Go away. When Cole's gone, sometimes. None of them help ever. Sometimes we need Richard's help. Uh, Cole, you're here, so why don't you talk yeah, about your process? Because um, you, you kind of touch it just as much I as I do. It. I get yeah. fingers in all the pepper patches. Um, so, yeah, it starts like after it goes to boards and audio and. Um, they give me all the pieces, and it's like, okay, we actually need to time out what talking sounds like, which is... <laughs> Cole explains editing. Yeah, <laughs> which is interesting because, like, whenever you talk, you don't think at the pace at which you're talking, or, like, when you're having a conversation with somebody, it's like, okay, you need to pause and let them talk, but if you pause for too long, then it sounds really awkward. So, it's, uh, yeah, I'll go in and do a first pass normally of... Um, we normally do a three pass for every actor, three or more, and uh, um, pick, it's essentially picking the best take. So whenever you hear somebody talk, it's also hearing, okay, they delivered this line in this way. The person's responding, how do they respond? Do they respond like they're angry, happy, sad? What's, what's the tone of the scene? And it's kind of shaping the scene going forward, so that way whenever we pass it off to animation, they kind of have a good framework as to how people are talking, mm-hmm. as well as like what they're saying. What, what, do you, what does that mean? Uh, so when we're trying to make things ready for animation, we do our best to lock it in a way that the frame counts never change for them. I mean, there's yeah. some instances where that doesn't happen, but like that, as much as we can keep them from having to animate stuff that won't actually go to air. That's one of the big difference, differences between our 2D pipeline and our 3D pipeline is that I know a lot of times like 3D, since the camera's more free flowing and you can kind of change the camera with the 3D recording and mocap and stuff. With us, it's like, well, you set the characters to the stage, not the camera to the characters. Exactly. Yeah. It's a little more complicated. Uh, it's always a struggle too, because you know, as helpful as uh, making it animatic is to the uh, animators, sometimes when it's being animated, the moment feels different when it's kind of coming to life. So those are the moments in which, well, it's like we need to pause here or like let this moment breathe a little bit more and that's where we end up adding frames and stuff. So it's kind of, the editorial part of it is kind of changing until, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, trying to deliver yeah, what until the initial the intent yeah. of the like scene was. Yesterday, the last thing we did for episode five was add like six frames to the last shot. 36. <laughs> Oh no, we did, we added thirty six to the that one shot, but yeah. like the yeah the very last thing was okay. like adding six frames to the uh, the very end of it. So we're always messing with it, um, only because I can never decide on what I want. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always for the good of the show. Like you want to do what yeah, it, 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 you want to be purposeful. Yeah, a like, lot of it is is making it just feel right and mm-hmm. not cutting too soon sometimes on stuff. Yeah. Um, so Cole has to deal with that a lot. Uh, he has to he has to label the. Uh, all the shots and the scenes. Yeah. Label um, it so that way they, everybody knows. It. If you've seen, I know we've probably said before, any of the animatics have our time code at the bottom, so that mm-hmm. way at any given point somebody can say the exact, down to the exact, yeah, right there. there you, go. you can see down to the exact frame exactly what yeah. they're working on. So this is scene uh, <laughs> 1080, which would be uh, episode one, scene eight. This is shot eight and frame 37. And then you have the overall time code there, which is 11 minutes, 43 seconds, frame 15. Numbers. Numbers. Yeah. <laughs> it's exciting stuff. It actually makes it a lot easier for when we're doing fixes at the end for uh, final polish and stuff, where we can watch through it. And I'll just be like, you just send the code, which would be 1080 underscore 0080, uh, frame 37. And Issa knows exactly where to go yeah. to uh, fix a correction. A little, a little correction. pointer, a lot of times the time code on the bottom there that's of the episode itself, not necessarily of the project, which we yeah. work in Premiere. We, in our system, we always add 10 seconds of silence at the beginning in case there's music cues that come in that want to start before the episode begins. Like, they want to have a nice lead in and mm-hmm. don't want to just get chopped off at the very beginning. So, um, it can be a little, that's why we never go by the time code at the bottom and why we yeah. always have the frame count on the left side. Also, shout out to me for creating that convention. Oh yeah. <laughs> Good job, yes. Maggie. Yes, Maggie, yeah. you're a genius. <laughs> Spreadsheets are cool. 
But as far as like my involvement with it, essentially, after I sent off the animatics to animation and backgrounds and everybody, um, I just kind of touch it the entire way through while they're sending work in progress mm -hmm. updates the back to me. Play blasts go in, and so that way, like it can be. We have like weekly meetings with. Uh, Matt and Bernie that they sit and watch and make sure that it's the quality that Rooster Teeth wants to make. And so, um, yeah, that having those weekly updates is kind of what, after animatics, what my role in the pipeline turns into. So battle. You what? <laughs> uh, when you get an assignment from Maggie, mm -hmm. um, what is, walk us through the process of how uh, you take a scene co to completion. Well, the first thing I do, I message you, and then Good answer. if you're available, <laughs> you'll come to, he, Jordan will come to my desk, and then he'll kind of act out the scene in front of me. He's always doing crazy stuff yeah. with his hands, and I try to bring that into the scene. <laughs> um, and then I, like, I cut it, um, delete a whole bunch of drawings from the animatic, and then I just you know, I keyframe it, send that to Jordan and Nisa for approval. They tell me what to fix, and then I just keep working from there, and then hopefully I finish it on time. You forgot layout, but it's okay. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I he dropped the layout. characters in, yeah. He just knows from the beginning. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, um, we, uh, we, have, we have three uh, reviews every week uh, where everyone comes together and we watch everyone's in-progress stuff um, it's to help, you know, so everyone knows what each other's working on, what kind of notes are being given, um, kind of seeing what everyone else's animation looks like and, you know, whether or not everyone else can pick up on other stuff. Um, there's a lot of uh, fun instances where, um, I'm doing it, there's a lot of fun <laughs> instances where um, something that we might like or something that other people like from other people's animation, they'll borrow that um, in their own animation and that's the whole point of us trying to do review as well is that we're a team and everyone grows um, with each other, so sometimes we'll have really um, little visual gags and stuff, or things like uh, we call the <laughs> affectionately call the Andrew mouth. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to point out. Yeah, to. that thing um, spread like wildfire. <laughs> <laughs> um, our animator Andrew started doing this chewing mouth thing. That's kind of cute, where it looks like there's a line, and then it looks like the mouth is the character's chewing. Um, <laughs> It was really cute. At first we were like, that's kind of off model, we never had that. And then suddenly everyone started doing it and we we're like, all right, fine. <laughs> well, it, then it, was, it turned into, we need to stop doing this as much. <laughs> Every closed mouth was that same mouth. It's too good. <laughs> Reviews is also where the Neil Raptor arms came yeah, from, right? That's right? So if you see Neil, he's always up here. Yeah, everyone, <laughs> yeah. everyone really latched onto that and now yeah. Neil Raptor arms are um, yeah, it was a default pose in his library. It was one of those, yeah, one of those cases where early on in the show, when we were like, you know, animating the characters for the first time, um, yeah, and Neil just like awkwardly holding his arms like this, and somebody was like, he looks like a raptor, and he's so awkward, and then it just right then and there became like a character trait. Yeah, th yeah. those are like, I think the most significant thing that collaboration, like this exactly. show doesn't get made by one person. Yeah. Exactly, like, like each scene is. The culmination of everybody yeah. in the department. One thing uh, Bernie says a lot is everything is writing, so it's not just the script, it's everyone else touching it, like the timing, you know, the comedy beats and the timing for edit, the uh, funny quirks the animators can put in, um, and uh, sound effects, you know, it goes all through the pipeline and it's what makes everything. Uh, no, I didn't notice I didn't mention producing. Doesn't really that. Uh, sorry. Uh, and the, the last part of any uh, episode of Camp Camp is we get the soundtrack in, which is just we use as our end credit song. Um, so a big shout out to Richie Branson, who's doing all of the uh, songs this season. He's doing like such a good job. It's like we worked with him during the first season and after that we were like, we really would just like to continue working with this man as much as we can. Um, we had him do the whole season. <laughs> yeah. So like, if you haven't had a chance to check out the season two soundtrack, which uh, all of the tracks release with the uh, first release of each episode. So the episode five track came out this today. Um, <laughs> but uh, what's really re unique about Richie is that he ha has found this really good mix of incorporating his own style but also putting in beats from the stories uh, just based on scripts and exports that we've given him and just kind of really caters it to the show, which is really interesting but not in a two-on-the-nose sort of way. Yeah. 
I agree. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, that's basically the rundown. Is there the any? Thing. <laughs> it says here, plimp, uh, plimp, plimp. <laughs> pimp, <laughs> pimp the platypus plus plush. So here we'll it is. It. <laughs> it's the, the only one, one we have right now, so we can't give it away. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it should be in the store pretty soon, we hope. Um, it whacks. But well, hisses first. Mwack. <laughs> <laughs> then mwack. Hiss then whack. Mwack. <laughs> no, it didn't do it. Perfect. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I swear it works. I don't know if you can hear it, but it mwacks. <laughs> Believe us. The tail is super soft. Um, and then just kind of I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, so let's. Do you guys want to go? Kind of talk about our experience with uh, working here. So uh, kind of starting like where you went to school and stuff and how you ended up at Roost Teeth and then how your responsibilities have changed since you got here. Oh boy, uh, I'll, I'll go first. Yes, okay. yes, um, we'll start in the middle. <laughs> Hello, um, I went to California College of the Arts in Oakland uh, with a major in animation. So went to a, went to like a uh, a liberal arts school kind of thing, and it's the Bay Area, so everyone's pretty, uh, everyone's pretty liberal there too. Um, graduated, I did a job in LA, and then Rooster Teeth. Sounds like you robbed a bank. <laughs> 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 Pulled off a job in LA. <laughs> I did a job Make in cool LA, milk. and then I noticed that Rooster Teeth had an opening for 2D animators. Um, fun story is that uh, I think I tell this often is that Rooster Teeth. Working at Rooster Teeth was actually my five-year plan at that time. Like, oh, this is a goal. I want to go there. And suddenly this opening up, opened, and I was like, oh, God, I guess I'm doing it now, um, which is great. They got back to me, and I was able to start working as a regular animator um, on X-Ray and Vav season two. And then since then, <laughs> I'm here now as a lead animator, which is really awesome, um, getting to work with Jordan, Maggie, and like the rest of the team. Um, I can't believe how much we were able to accomplish, especially with such um, su our limited resources and just how much we all collectively uh, feel like a family. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we hate each other and love each other. <laughs> well, yeah, it's uh, a lot falls onto, you know, everyone, especially the animators, like so much responsibility of like modeling and rigging and, you know, they do layout on their own, which is like unusual. They do, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, it 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 is amazing that like the jump. Um, I feel like the big jump in quality w from X Rain Vav season two to Camp Camp season one is a lot due to the fact that we hired really great animators, <laughs> and all of you are great. So let's give them a hand again because they deserve it. I don't know. I'll go next. What's your story? I don't know, like I'm gonna try to condense it as much as possible because I would think that my story kind of starts in high school and I was taking my first art class ever and I was just kind of drawing, did I say art school? High school. You said high school. You said high school. All right, never mind, I'm gonna keep school, going then. <laughs> so I, I remember I was in high school and I was in my first art class drawing like panel drawings, kind of like a comic book and my whole career choice was like, I'm gonna, I, I grew up in Louisiana so I was like, I'm gonna go to LSU, become an architect. That's like the only creative career I know of that's what I'm going to go do. And then my professor or teacher was just like, have you heard of Savannah College of Art and Design? Like, you should probably apply to go there. <laughs> and then it struck me. I was like, holy shit. Someone gets paid to make cartoons. I want to do that. <laughs> so then I ended up going to Savannah College of Art and Design. And, you know, one thing led to another. And now I'm working at Rooster Teeth. And I just want to, like, add on to what Issa was saying about kind of like our family and sense of community. Like, my favorite aspect of working at this company is just the people that I work with, like feeling comfortable and like wanting to go out and hang out with these guys, these clowns over here and go get drinks <laughs> on the weekend or stay late. Yeah. Like that makes staying late when we have to like so much easier yeah. when you just really like the people you work next to. Yeah. <laughs> Except for that he guy. Made, right? He made you cry. <laughs> that troublemaker. <laughs> My next. Yeah, go cool. for it, Cole, because you've got a roller coaster. Over. Yeah, so <laughs> it all begins when I was a babe. No, um, Fast no, forward, I was, please. Uh, no, I w went to Tyler, UT Tyler, for a couple of years and was in nursing. And I was like, this is the life for me. And then I was like, nope, nope, it's actually not. And uh, started doing like marketing. And I was like, anytime somebody would ask me what you want to do with marketing, I'd be like, oh, I just want to finish school so I can get, go back to school and do something I actually want to do. 
And I was like, that's a shitty way to think. <laughs> so I kind of was like, you know what? I really want to be involved in media, just like film, television. I just I don't know what yet, but I just want to do it. So I uh, moved to Austin and started going down to Texas State, down in San Marcos. Um, and I learned to be, I'm, my degree is in television news. So uh, whenever I graduated, luckily I had been a guardian before. Shout out to the guardians. You guys are doing yeah. an amazing fucking job this year. <laughs> so yeah, first thank you, thank you to them. But I uh, started as a guardian and um, eventually like lived in the Austin area. And so I was like, okay, well, if we ever need help with anything, you can come in and work. And we'll, we won't. We, we'll sometimes we'll pay you an <laughs> <laughs> experience and uh but became friends with uh, patrick salazar the head of broadcast and um as i was finishing news i was like wait your department is news kind of like you're doing there's a switcher you have you do broadcast that's the exact same as a news station and he was like yeah i was like hey i'm graduating with a news degree can i work here or can i intern and he was like yeah sure and so i started doing there and uh Though I've always, if any of you watch any of our other content, you know I'm like super huge anime fan, and uh, animation always been like a passion of mine since I was a little a little babe, and uh, I was like, yeah, I I really want to pitch an animated show. I have no idea how to do that because I only know news. <laughs> so I, I went and got lunch with Miles one day. I was like, how do you pitch an animated show? And while we were sitting there. Gray walked by, <laughs> and Miles was like, sit down, we gotta talk about this. After Gray, Cohen walked by, and he's like, oh, we gotta talk about this. And it got to the point where it was like, do you wanna be in animation? I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, please. And like, I love broadcast and Patrick and all of them, but it was like, this is kind of what I'm passionate about. And uh, they were like, what can you do? I'm like, I have no skills. <laughs> I don't know how to do anything. All I do for broadcast kind of is edit, which no, that's not an insult to you editors. Editing is a skill, I guess. I guess. Um, and so uh, I was like, I could edit. And they were like, oh, well, we need an editor. We're working on X-Ray and Vav. And our two editors are super busy with RVB and Ruby. You can help them, but also kind of start working on X-Ray and Vav. Yeah. And the rest is history. Mm -hmm. And Been, now we're here. Yeah, now you're <laughs> stuck with me. <laughs> well, what's funny is uh, you took over uh, for Daniel Fabello. Yeah. Um, yeah, he edited. He was the editor for season one of X-Ray and Vav, um, and now he's the co-director of Laser Team Two. So <laughs> he went out and did some cool, cool stuff as well. Um, we can finish on you. Yeah, one. yeah. My my story is I don't know. It's oh, unconventional. Okay, oh, you wanted to go first. No, I figured we could finish on you, but oh, want to finish on me? What? <laughs> Phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Aunt Sue. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I was a theater education major in college and uh, ended up stage managing a lot of shows, including a show called Reefer Madness that Lindsay Jones was directing. Um, we were really good friends in college, and so uh, she found out about a production coordinator job that was opening for Ruby season one, um, and so I jumped on that and uh, have been working at the company since then. After uh, the first season of Ruby, I worked for Yvonne doing production budgets throughout the company and Alan in sales. Uh, neither of those were really great for me, but um, luckily Ruby started again, and then as the 2D department grew, I kind of just moved over to that. Yay. Yay. <laughs> And now you'll never leave. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you made you made the scene number system. You can't go. <laughs> it's your legacy. Legacy. Um, I was always interested in cartoons and stuff. I didn't. I guess I didn't really think about how cool cartoons were until I started trying to make them. Um, the first thing I ever animated was the first episode of RTAA, which we saw at the beginning of the panel, which is why it's not good. Um, <laughs> But uh, I just decided one day I was, I was uh, just really bored and I was watching a lot of Homestar Runner DVDs. So I was like, I was like it can't be that hard. I'm going to try to make something <laughs> like that. It can't be that hard. You just push a well, button. Well, they, they use very limited There's animation. Exactly. Um, you know. So yeah, I was, able to, I was able to figure it out and uh, did a couple. Uh, I started with RTAA and then like Gus saw it and eventually, you know, it was received so popularly that I was like, I gotta keep making more. So it was actually just a way for me to learn um, 
kind of teach myself how to animate. And yeah, soon enough, I, when I ended up moving out here, um, I was kind of just an, still the only person, the only 2D animator for a couple more years until uh, we went out and uh, hired our first uh, uh, lead animator to do X-Ray and Vav. Um, and then so we did season one, season two, and then um, I was still working on RTA on the side until we got uh, more animators in and we were able to kind of share the load of uh, RTAA um, and eventually just kind of stepped out of animating it at all and uh, moved full fully on to writing and directing. Um, still trying to learn all the time, uh, <laughs> being, being non-traditionally educated. Um, I didn't go to school for animation. I just kind of watched my favorite shows and tried to figure out, try to pick up what I could learn. Um, and so I definitely learned a lot from, from you guys, uh, all of our animators and stuff. So it's been pretty crazy. Sniff. <laughs> That's right. Everyone, everyone clapped. We already showed that, right? Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to do Q&A. Yay. Yay. So if anyone has any questions, we have somebody with a mic, I think, who will run around. I think just raise your hand. Yeah, raise there. your hand. There's and a question right there. You're first. Check, check. I found him. He's on the edge. No. Oh, um, the mic's over there. Oh, yeah. There are multiple. That guy. That guy. Um, that stand guy. up. Him. Stand up. Yeah, 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 you. yeah, yeah you. There are lots of people standing up. Uh, yes. <laughs> Everyone's leaving. They don't have questions. <laughs> we, Hello. So family? the first thing I want to say is uh, my senior year, which was just, just this past year of high school, uh, the end project for my animation class was to do a report on an animator, and I did my report on you. Jordan. Baller! Oh, sorry. <laughs> Did um, you get an F? I'm sorry. <laughs> well, considering I got the highest grade in class. So. Baller! Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the reason was... Is Where were you when I was in high school? <laughs> <laughs> my, my teacher was like... Uh, my teacher asked the class, does anyone know who this is? And the room was silent. <laughs> oh, okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring it back down. But uh, <laughs> my question was, I'm going to be attending Texas State this coming fall. Uh, Animal cats. <laughs> um, <laughs> there we go. Keep going. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm, I'm going in uh, as a pre-major for uh, communication design, and I just was wondering just to the whole panel, what, what would be the best thing to get to start off with just working with animation uh, software and all that, and all that stuff? Ooh. Um, yeah, I, we can kind of uh, sure. double team on this. Um, basic programs you definitely should kind of start out, need to know. First thing I can think of is Adobe Flash, although it might be called Adobe Animate right now. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty basic enough for you to get a gist of what the other programs are like. It's how I learned, so yeah. <laughs> it's the only, it, I don't know how to use Toon Boom though, so. Yeah. Flash, Flash and Animate are pretty good. Um, the program that we use is Toon Boom Harmony, which is basically Flash on steroids. <laughs> it's fucking fantastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, basically anything to get your first, like the 12 principles of animation out of the way, and then once you got a solid foundation in that, it's just a matter of learning the program. Yeah. Just working on things, yeah. just do it. Thank you. And if you want a uh, 3D animation, Maya is good. So. <laughs> Ooh, uh, who next? This one. Right here. Hello. Hi. You're right there. <laughs> um, what are a couple of things that you wish you would have known when first starting out in your animation career, or anything that led to it? Hmm. hmm. I wish I minored in business. <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, I mean, a lot of the work out there is freelance, and just knowing how to figure that stuff out is mm. super. Mm -hmm. There's a there is a burgeoning um, independent animation community out there that is not studio based like us, and a lot of people who are getting their animation out are doing it on their own. So that's actually a very good point. Um, you need to know how to sell yourself, and really need to know how to like not downsell yourself either, <laughs> but um, really appear confident and keep going and learning from all your past projects and stuff. Um, my yeah, I guess thing. what they don't tell you is how hard it is. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and it's taxes too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> once you get out in the job market. <laughs> yeah, you have to be an adult. <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing I would try to tell myself is to actually finish stuff. That's always the biggest thing, is um, really getting that big motivation and that big push to like actually 
finish the personal thing you wanted to do. Being in a studio setting actually helps me a lot because um, it's other people kind of telling me what's done and what isn't, mm -hmm. and that's why I thrive on that. But some people don't, and some people can do their own thing, and I think being able to like figure out where you are on that spectrum is very important too. Yeah, I'd say two things. Save. Always save. <laughs> Always save. Um, save money or control S? Control S. Okay. <laughs> control S. Save both. your work. Also save Why not both? <laughs> the motto of our Slack. Um, also work smarter, not harder. Plan out what yes. you're going to do so that way you don't waste time doing un unnecessary steps. Yeah. And it'll also help you get like a clear vision of exactly what you want to make. And that vision will get better the more you work on it. Also, um, it's like the way I like to talk to people when they want to enter this industry is that you're going to be up against the most hardworking people. And really, it comes down to luck. So if you don't think you're the hardest working person of the ones that you know that are in your same industry, then you need to kick it up a notch because mm -hmm. it's like you're only going to get there if you work really hard, but it also takes that extra. Yeah. Like, I do want to say, like, to that, the luck, it also work hard to make yourself lucky. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. put yourself in the best situation. Yeah, possible. you make your own luck. Can I, can I tell a story about how I got hired? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was in LA. I got, I got the interview. They asked me how the weather in New Orleans was. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> we didn't know you were start. in LA. <laughs> so like when I, after I got the job and everything, I remember we went, we went to go get lunch somewhere with uh, Jordan was there. And then we were talking about how I got hired. And they were just like, we needed someone in three days. And we interviewed you. We found out you were in crazy. And we liked your work. So we were like, all right, come on. <laughs> I was like, oh, God, thank God. Oh, funny enough, Jordan Battle actually Jordan Battle and I actually met before we started working That's together. Right. We met That's at a right. house party mm -hmm. because of SCAD people. <laughs> I didn't even go to SCAD. <laughs> They're everywhere. Yeah. There's one right there. <laughs> There's a oh, bunch oh, behind oh, him. Oh, oh, they're, they're popping up! Oh, oh, oh. oh they're over there. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the question. Yeah. Yes, next question. Anyone else? Over there. There's, yeah, thumb up. There, there's two thumb people up. in there's very people similar thumb green shirts. Oh, <laughs> he had the thumb first. You can have a thumb. Same people don't have thumbs. All right. Yeah. Uh, when doing your jobs, uh, what are some of the biggest pet peeves you find what? Ooh. having? Ooh. What was biggest it? pet peeves? Uh, mm -hmm. Biggest pet, pet peeves. Pet peeves of not updating shotgun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jordan and not doing your play might last be Jordan time. battle. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? You said it might be me. <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> yeah, I uh, tend to give a lot of announcements at the beginning of the day, and it seems like half the people listen to it. <laughs> it's early. Um, we, you got to remember, uh, you always got to do the, the minor detail things, being uh, detail-oriented. So usually uh, if, if somebody like is overlooking a very small thing, um, is, is usually frustrating. Um, it, it or or when, when uh, Jordan Battle decides to do a joke in review and like, we'll do a play blast that's like. A joke play blast? <laughs> yeah, that deliberately has like a funny face in it or something yeah. that he was just like waiting for someone to laugh at. That's that really funny. That hasn't happened since season one. <laughs> I, I think most of our pet peeves ultimately come down to breakdown in communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, that's why Ma Maggie's motto is communication yeah. is key. I have um, never said that in my life. <laughs> She's lying. <laughs> okay. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Next question? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You fought for you it. You got a thumb. You're next. <laughs> They're wearing the All same right. color t-shirt. They <laughs> are. We're matching. I know. It's kind of weird. I don't know if I need that pretty Yeah. Loud. You're pretty loud. Um, <laughs> I started off writing in like film and theater. And only once I actually found an animator did I start writing for animation. What would you say are some of the biggest differences between writing for those sort of things that are all live action and animation? And what are some of the key things that I need to know about writing that so that he doesn't hate me when he reads my stuff? Oh, I have, oh. go ahead. Theater is the closest thing to animation writing you will ever find because of how detailed you have to be unless your stage manager is gonna kill you. Um, for me, the biggest thing I can think of is that um, animation is a lot of work. It's a lot of hard work. You have to appreciate your animators because um, they are doing. <laughs> they're do there's an extraordinary amount of um, extra steps that you really need to take in order to really hone that visual thing uh, that you really want. 
that's at least what I think. It's uh, yeah, you got to be mindful stuff. of how long it takes to get something done. So if you want, you know, something really crazy, <laughs> uh, he's staring at you. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, this camera move that we were showing uh, oh is you know wasn't it wasn't called out in the script. Um, we came across it in that reference, and uh, I asked Issa, "Can we do it?" Um, and it was so complicated that, you know, I think it's the only complicated camera move we can do <laughs> this season. Um, so, like, you, you know, knowing where to spend that uh, extra time or effort, um, where and when. Um, yeah, being mindful to call out everything that a character interacts with or, you know, something that needs to be in the scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maggie hates it when uh, a new character shows up and we have them titled Voice. And then, and I'm like, who the fuck is this? Uh, who's the voice? <laughs> Kyler oh, Kyler hates it too. Hates it too. <laughs> um, yeah, Kyler has to uh, put all that information for uh, the voice actors and stuff because he's the script supervisor, so he hates that too. Take the time to learn the lingo of animation. Yes. Like, learn how to mm -hmm. communicate with animators. So that way, you're not just like saying things and it's not sticking. Cool fight sequence here. Yeah. <laughs> cool fight sequence. They whoosh and boom. Yeah. 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 Jordan, actually, uh, Jordan has actually, over the past year or so, you've actually improved um, <laughs> and expanded your vocab of like animation terms. Yeah, that's because that's us. because when I started directing, I didn't know what texture. a lot of stuff was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah spacing and texture. <laughs> I had just made up my own terms. Uh, and he was like, wait, there's another term for that? Yeah, so I would tell people, just do a doink here or <laughs> when a character does, does a squish or a squash. Yeah. It was called a doink. Uh, but yeah, I think I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah. right. Next, Next question. question. I see way back there. Oh yeah, let's we haven't got one from the oh, back man, yet. Yeah. Make the guardians on the one the even right further back. The back. There's there. one further back. Okay, we'll go even further back let's for the next ahead. one. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Hi. Hello. Uh, I just want to say I've been a big fan of you guys for a long time. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank I you. just finished my freshman year of college uh, at Edinburgh Congrats. University. Uh, for those of you who don't know, best school on the East Coast for animation. Okay, I was, I was, <laughs> was wondering if it was actually in Scotland. <laughs> uh, and my major is animation, and uh, I just want to ask, I don't know if this is the best place to do it, but what are some of the tips or tricks I could use to get a start with you guys? Uh, I guess what we look for first is a, a super cool reel. So we got to know, we got to know. Like 30 seconds. Yeah, not too long. And like something that just shows like, you know, some of your best stuff really quick. Um, you Keyword know, like your best Having a whole stuff. scene. Yeah, lots of different types of animation. Um, basically everything you can do and anything you can pull off in animation is good. Um, yeah, art, art skills are important. There's a lots of custom drawings involved in uh what we do, um, uh, yeah. Don't just let. <laughs> don't be a weirdo, says Maggie. <laughs> um, don't call me Mrs. Tommy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a um, the one thing that I actually learned uh, over my experience is that um, um, how do we put it? Know what you want to get into. Mm. Um, so there's a different. There's definitely a difference between film, television, and any and shorts and stuff like that. Um, with film animation, it is actually largely different. Um, such as Disney and DreamWorks and stuff, they want you to be a bit more organic and natural. If you want to work in television, uh, big tip, sh your reel should sh express how flexible you can be. Um, because when you're working in television, if you notice the styles that we do, we go all across the board, like doing whatever, because that's what happens in 2D, that um, the whatever the style is demanding, you have to adapt to it. So if you want to be a 2D animator in television, what they're looking for is making sure that you are flexible for that. Um, so just make sure you work on that and really stick to your foundation, like the 12 principles of animation. Gil's favorite principle is arcs. Arcs. <laughs> arcs. Always with the arcs. Arcs, always with arcs. Um, and really make sure you stick to your foundation and stuff like that. I think also showing like the different types of animation you can do, not just traditional hand-drawn stuff, but working with uh, puppeted animation. Um, you know, can't, yeah, different, different types of scenes, more emotional scenes, comedy scenes, stuff like that. So just showing anything you can pull off in a very quick video. Well, <laughs> most of the time, like, you know, it, it, people are looking for an animator 
and there's lots of people applying, they'll just look at the reel and like they can make up their mind right then and there mm, whether yeah. or not they're gonna it's, go further or not. It's never personal. So yeah. in this for any it doesn't have to be animation, it can be any position you're applying for or anywhere. In the reel, put your best work. Like really sit down and go, okay, is this the best thing that I can be showing right now? Quality is way more important than quantity. I know that we're also usually very hesitant if it says that you have not graduated from college. We typically do not want to be the catalyst for you to drop out. Um, <laughs> that needs to be a decision you make on your own, and please do not make us make that for you. Um, but it's just like, if you don't meet the requirements that are listed on a job posting, just please don't apply for that. Like, maybe try to... Like, you can send a cover letter that's like, hey, I don't qualify for this, but if you ever have this opening, keep me in mind and attach the resume. Like, that's fine, but... This is, this is mostly Maggie just speaking from other experiences. <laughs> well, She's well, not that, telling you specifically yeah. not well, to I do can, this. <laughs> I, can, I can attest to that personally. Whenever I first applied, Brandon told me no. He's like, you don't have the skills that we need right now. Just go work on it. So that's what I did. I went on it. I went back, focused on myself, built up my own skills. Next time I applied, he's like, yeah, you're good enough now. So... You are good enough. Aww. I think that. <laughs> I don't know. Well, before, before we move on to the next question, <laughs> please. I just, I just want to add like two more things to it, just in case you're applying to jobs anywhere, not just to Rooster Teeth. I was always advised that having the largest like internet presence you could possibly have is very beneficial. Like, there's so many times where we see someone's reel on YouTube or um, Tumblr or wherever, and then we like we spare around the office. So that's one way. But also, one thing that kind of encouraged my move out to L.A. before coming over here is that I kept on trying to apply to all the studios out there. And what I kept thinking was, no matter like, how good I get over here in Louisiana, there's someone just as good, if not better, already living there. And I wouldn't advise, kind of like similar to what Maggie was saying, I wouldn't advise moving to Texas if Rooster Teeth is your goal, but definitely move to where the jobs are, wherever the biggest conglomerate of jobs are. Yeah, we're not the end-all, be-all. Yeah. <laughs> Give us okay. some more time to work on our pipeline. <laughs> uh, if you need more scene numbers. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, let's get Way that. In the back. Way, Way in the back, back there. Yep. It's a long walk. But someone's got to do it. Uh, hi. Hello. Hi. So mysterious back there. It's just a silhouette. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's, no, I like it. It's good. Okay, so just want. First, I want to say I think you guys are great. Thanks. Oh, thank you. You guys are an amazing. So. <laughs> oh, good. Is that Barb? That's cute. <laughs> yeah. So I, so I know that animating isn't easy, and that there's a lot of there's a big pro, there's a process to it. So, what do you think is the most crucial, or maybe the most difficult part of that process? Ooh. Ooh, mm. <laughs> ooh. Um, for me personally, is doing key poses. <laughs> the keys suck, um, just straight up. Uh, part of key posing is essentially you're making your to-do list, and making your to-do list from scratch <laughs> is really hard because you're bas It's for me, I'm basically critically thinking for three hours, um, and for those three hours, it's not just me critically. I can't, for me personally, I can't just critically think about this on my own because everyone else is trying to talk to me to tell me to do other stuff too. Um, so that three hours extends to like five hours and me going like, why can't I, what are these keys? What do I do? Um, that's the m crucial part for me for animation um, is making sure that that to-do list is set because then after that, it's easy because then you know what to do. Speaking as just the director is the most crucial thing is making sure you explain you know when it gets to animation make sure the animator has everything they need to just knock it out as quickly as possible um, and uh, making sure you're pointing out things as the process goes so that it doesn't become too big of a problem to correct something yeah. um, and that means catching uh, scaling issues in the layout, yeah. uh, key poses you don't like when they do uh, the key pose pass, um, you know, when it gets to in-betweens, whether or not a pose to pose is fast enough, um, just so that like when you, you know, like if a scaling issue is three iterations later and you're like, eh, let's change this, like that kind of just mucks up the whole thing. Um, so yeah, being mindful of that. <laughs> 
For me, it's uh, it really comes down to actually hitting our schedules, like for the entire pipeline, but really just starting with writing. Um, if we have scripts early enough, we can get enough of the process started that we can have parts of the pipeline pull ahead far enough that we can kind of not have to crunch. Um, other factors go into that, but like, for example, right now we're releasing episode five, but we're already about halfway into animation for episode nine. So it's like, there's still a lot more we have to do to that stuff, but we're still able to stay far enough ahead because the writers kept on track and so storyboards could keep on track and art could keep on track and like, yeah. It's, it's a domino effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll just go. Um, like, I think Issa and I's mind are, like, almost opposite when it comes, because I, yeah. I mean, it's the technical things that, like, I can't yeah, stand doing, <laughs> but Issa I mean, knows. like, it's the rigging the characters, I just want to animate, like, my, what I would say my specialty in animation is, is actually kind of more of the traditional, just hand-drawn, like, I want to get in there and just start making the things move, so it's like the, the pre-planning and stuff like that is my most difficult parts, so I think it just comes down to personality yeah. and what you prefer doing. I think we have time for one more question. Yeah, one we have more. four minutes or right there. All right, animator friend. <laughs> <laughs> Run. Sorry. It's okay, you're doing great. It's, you're doing great. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him go. Um, you mentioned this earlier, and I was actually wondering what goes into pitching an episode pilot for a series? A lot, a lot of stuff. Uh, it's a lot. Um, yeah, you want to talk about this? You know more about it. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, so we have a few different uh, people in different positions that kind of get to see the pitches as they come in. We have open calls for pitches from people within our department, as well as the company at large, as well as. Um, pitches that we get from outside groups. So exam for example, if like we see someone that we think is really cool on the internet and we think that they're like someone we'd love to work with, like we might start working on a relationship with them. Um, but when we're dealing with like an internal pitch, which is how it's mainly been so far, um, we kind of let the creative heads in the animation department wrap their heads around what the pitch exactly is, how they think it will fit into the schedule. Um, and then once we've done that, we present the idea to our executive producers as well as our programming director. Um, and then if it goes through approvals for that, then I create budgets and those have to get approved and then it's just this whole slew of stuff. As far as creatively speaking, I think having it be um, as kind of like developed as possible, like, you know, yeah, when you have an idea, um, you want yeah, you want to flesh it out as much as possible, and um, even go as far as like having concept art, maybe even like a spec script, um, a tip, overview. yeah, a summary and outline for the season. Um, how it's know. marketable? Yeah, like how yeah, you stuff can like sell that. your product from it. Yeah, um, there's a bunch of stuff you can consider um, to just try to sell it as much as possible. Uh, I think what gets it. Um, creative people excited is just having a cool story with lots of cool characters, um, a neat idea. Um, there was one more thing that I forgot, but <laughs> just having the, it be cool. <laughs> I think the really important part is making sure that whoever you're pitching to actually sees what you're seeing, too. Yeah. The visuals help a lot. As yeah. well as make your pitch fun. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, people who are looking at pitches are going to see hundreds of pitches anytime they're looking. Maybe so. Like, if there's anything you can do in your pitch to differentiate yourself from everyone else, like whether it's the wording. I mean, if you're like, oh, it's X meets X with a result of Y. So if you're like, oh, like just have better way of wording all that. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely make sure that you have the opportunity to show the pitch to people that you trust and to have as many collaborative voices helping you out with everything that you can. It's like. I've already harped on it enough in this panel, so you know how much I harp on it to the team, but it's like having some clear communication with collaboration with other people, like that's really the only way that you're gonna get the best work out of yourself. Yeah, don't surround yourself with yes men. Like listen to opposing opinions and learn from them. Yeah. Yes, Cole. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> okay, that's well it. that's all the time we have, so. Thanks for yes, coming. Thanks everyone for coming. Hope you learned something cool.